What's going on guys? It's Mark with Limo Marketer back with another training session and today I'm going to be talking about the keyword broadness spectrum. Now if you're a limousine operator and you're running any sort of paid advertising campaign, whether that be Google or Bing ads, I should say paid search advertising campaign, then this video is for you and take notes. So I got a question on Sunday in the Limo Marketing Mastermind Facebook group. If you're not a member, you should join up. Uh, just Google Limo Marketing Mastermind Facebook group. Uh, I got a question from, I believe it was a Johnny Bowie. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Anyways, Johnny's question was, um, he was using a keyword. Um, it was something like um, chauffeur, And I know it wasn't JFK Airport. I forget the name of the airport, but airport. And this was his keyword. You notice there's brackets around it. So what we call that is an exact match keyword. So essentially what you're telling Google is whenever someone searches this exact query, chauffeur JFK Airport, show one of my ads because that, that's essentially fundamentally how Google Ads works, Bing Ads. Any sort of paid search marketing campaign you do, you have keywords that are in your account and then you have ads that match those keywords. It's called an ad group. So an ad group is just keywords and then it's ads. And what many times I find people get confused are uh, keywords and search queries which I'll go a little more in depth on that in another video. But a keyword is an actual uh, phrase or group of words. Um, so they call it keyword, but a keyword could be limo JFK airport. So you're like, well, Mark, those are words. Wouldn't it be keywords? No. So we call this one keyword. And so what a keyword what its only job is, is to match up when someone searches uh, in Google uh, from their mobile device, from their computer, uh, desktop. Uh, a computer, you can think of it like it gets triggered. Okay, so when a keyword gets triggered, so let's say, let's say this is an exact match keyword, and that's what this is going to be about, the keyword broadness spectrum, and someone types in this exact thing, well then this keyword gets activated or triggered and then what it does is it shows one of the ads that's in the same ad group it's in. And this is why having lots of ad groups is so important because we really want to match our ad to what someone was searching for. That's going to give us the highest click through rate. But today I want to talk about the keyword broadness spectrum. And so there's actually four different match types. And so when Google was creating um, Google Ads, they, they knew they needed to figure out a way um, that they could use different types of keywords to match up with different types of search queries. Because here's what's so complex about this. Um, I, I believe they say now still 15 to 20% of searches that happen have never happened before. So take a moment to think about how crazy that is um, because I'm sure there's probably been trillions of searches at this point and 15 to 20% of them are still unique or at least I saw that stat a few years ago. And it blew my mind, I'm like how does that even happen? But the more I thought about it, the more it made sense. Think about what's getting popular now, voice search. Okay, so when someone um, just speaks into Google, many times it might be a whole sentence they're searching. And so Google knew it needed a way to match people up to those, um, to those searches that wouldn't, that wouldn't be perfect, right? Because if your keyword's limo, JFK, airport, and let's say it's an exact match, Right? Exact match means these brackets. Exact match means the person would have to type in this exact search query. Nothing before it, nothing after it, nothing in the middle for the keyword to get 
triggered or activated. And so Google knew, okay, there's not, people running Google Ads are gonna have to figure out tens of thousands of potential keywords because you know we can't just have it be an exact match. And so that's when uh, these other match types were born. And so it goes from most specific, so most specific to least specific. Now I'm going to <clears throat> quickly just go over what each of these things means. So a broad match keyword, these are the keywords I see all of the time in accounts where maybe the owner of the company built it and they didn't do a lot of research or they hired an agency that didn't know what they were doing. Um, so a broad match keyword we shouldn't be using. I never want to see them in any accounts that I audit. Um, you just shouldn't use broad match keywords. And you'll know what a broad match keyword is. If you go into your account right now, your Google Ads account, by the way, if you have a Google Ads account, go in there right now. Click on where it says keywords on the left-hand side. Now I want you to look at the types of keywords you have. If you don't see a plus next to the word or quotes around it or brackets around it, that means you're using what we call a broad match keyword. Now, um, you can think of broad match keywords as Google's stupid tax. So uh, what a broad match keyword means is, let's just do a quick example here. Let's say someone searches for red shoes, okay? And it's an exact match, okay? So there's brackets around these. That means someone's gonna to have to type in exactly red shoes for that keyword to get triggered and an ad to be shown. Google's actually made quite a few changes in the past few years, so exact match isn't exact match anymore. Um, but going over that's gonna make this unnecessarily complicated. So just, just try to remember, exact match means the, the search query needs to match the keyword exactly. So the ad would only be trigger if someone searched red shoes, okay? Now, let's say, someone is searching for best red shoes, right? So someone searches best red shoes. Well, this phrase match keyword, and phrase is the one with the quotes around it, um, this keyword would get triggered or activated by best red shoes. And that's because this phrase, it's actually easier to remember, phrase match means the phrase has to match the search query. So best red shoes, this keyword get triggered, the ad would be shown. Now if someone said or typed in red high heel shoes, this keyword would not be triggered. So Google was like, okay, so we've got exact match. Phrase match that, that makes sense, but there's still gonna be so many variations and we want people to be able to capture that traffic because it very well might still be relevant. That's when broad match modified was born. And by the way, I have no idea if it happened in this order. I'm just using it to illustrate a point. Um, so broad match modified pretty much means that you're gonna have pluses in front of these words. And so what it's essentially telling Google is that these two words, or very close, very close variations of them, must be somewhere in the search query. So think about how much that opens things up for us. Because if someone searched shoes, for, shoes in red for cheap, the keyword would still get triggered. If someone you know, searched um, best red high heel shoes, would still get triggered and ad would be shown. But what if someone searches blue shoes? Then no, no ad is shown. And so it's only going to show when someone searches red and then shoes. Those two words must be in the search query. Let's go into broad match. So broad match, it's probably one of the reasons Google has so much freaking money is um, these broad match keywords. So broad match pretty much means if someone typed blue shoes, 
this would still get triggered because it's in the same category. So you can kind of think as broad match as category search. So for instance, if someone searches car service, um, and let's say your keyword, okay, let's just say your keyword is car service, right? It's a broad match keyword. You've got no, um, no pluses in front of the words, no quotes around um, the keyword, no brackets around it. So this is your keyword. And someone searches taxi to the airport, very likely this will get triggered and show an ad. And so you can kind of see why broad match keywords are dangerous, right? Because for you guys that do um, limousines, black car service, um, those sorts of services, you don't want your ad to be shown when someone's searching for a taxi. Now, some people might say, well, it's still someone looking for transportation and it's possible that person could call and book a ride with us. Yes, 100%, it is possible. I agree with you there. However, if you have a choice between going with someone who's looking for exactly what it is you offer and then someone looking for something close to what you offer and you can only pick one, which one are you gonna pick? Obviously, you're always gonna go with the one of someone searching for exactly what it is you offer. And so I actually got this question the other day where someone said they wanted to put their ads in front of someone that was searching for a hotel with the thinking that if they're searching to book a hotel, they will likely need transportation. And while I can understand the thought process in that, it's never a good idea. And here's why, because we can either um, target that person or you can target someone who's looking for the exact service you offer, okay? So maybe if you have an unlimited budget, maybe that, um, and, and that probably still wouldn't make sense because what's gonna happen is someone's gonna click on your ad, they were looking for hotels, they click on your ad, they go to your uh, website or preferably landing page, and they're like, oh, this isn't what I was looking for. Then they click back and you just wasted money on that click that you're never gonna get back. So that's why you always, and the same thing goes with your competition. Guys, stop bidding on your competitors. It's not a good thing to do because typically that money can be spent somewhere else. There's only very, very certain circumstances that I ever suggest targeting your competition. And even then, it probably isn't worth it. Because what happens is, if someone's searching for your competition, there's a good chance they already booked a ride with them. How many of you guys running Google or Bing Ads campaigns have gotten calls for someone looking for another company, they thought you were them, they called, so not only did you spend money on the click, but it wasted your time. And you just have to think about this, how many people actually clicked, saw that you weren't that company, and then left. So you don't want to be targeting competitors or anything like that. Uh, only exactly what it is that they're looking for. That's all you want to do. And so, your question might be, okay, so we're not supposed to use broad match. Which match types do you use, Mark? And I use all of them. Use, use all three. And you can use the same exact keyword. So I'll just do an easy one. Let's say your keyword's limo service. I'm also going to put that in phrase match and exact match. So why do I do that? Well, for some, sometimes, uh, that's supposed to be a plus, sometimes this keyword performs the best, sometimes this one does, sometimes this one does. And when I, when I say perform the best, what I mean is it gives me the lowest cost per conversion, which conversions are leads. So the lowest cost per lead, that's what we're going for. Um, and so this, this might give you, let's say, gives you a $15 cost per lead, but this one gives you, let's say, a $9 cost per lead. Well, you're probably going to want to bid higher on this one, not as high on this one. And I see this oftentimes, this does happen because think about this, this is much more exact, where this can be lots of different things. What if they're searching for a Joe's limo service and you don't have Joe as a native keyword? That'll be another video coming up. 
uh, why negative keywords are important. Well, if you don't have Joe's as a negative, then when someone searches Joe's limo service, because it's got limo service and this one too, either one of these could be triggered. How does Google decide which one gets triggered? That depends on a lot of different factors. Essentially, whichever keyword will be triggered is the one Google thinks has the best chance of its ad getting clicked on because Google's a business, they're trying to bank money, and they're trying to optimize, they're trying to get people to click on the ads. That's what they want. So the best campaigns I see have the highest click-through rates. And so, and which is another reason to have lots of ad groups, lots of keywords, uh, lots of different ads because you really want, when someone does a search, you want your ad to really mirror what they were searching for. It's going to get the highest chance of getting clicked on. And so, if you guys take away one thing from this video, I want it to be this. Do not use these because it's just going to end up wasting a ton of money. So just use these three match types and you can use the exact same keyword in each match type. I actually encourage you do it and you can put that all in the same ad group. So for instance, one ad group might have limo service as the three different match types and then the ad is obviously gonna talk about limo service. Um, you might have another ad group that's party bus rentals where party bus is a broad match modified phrase match and exact match in that ad group. And don't be afraid of using more than a couple of keywords per ad group. It used to be a really big thing that, oh, you should only use one keyword per ad group. I've actually found that that isn't the case at all. And you know, many times I'll use five to 10 keywords in an ad group. Keep in mind, they want, you want them to be very closely related. So for instance, you know, one, one of the keywords could be limo service, and let's say you're based in Huntington Beach like I am. So one keyword could be limo service, one could be limo service Huntington Beach. Then you want your ad to say Huntington Beach limo service. Um, and so I hope you guys got a lot of value from this. Um, remember, you wanna be using all three match types, broad match, modified, phrase match, and exact match. Um, you want to use lots of different ad groups that are focused around the services you offer where you offer them. And if you guys do that, I guarantee you, you will have a lot of success with Google Ads, even without a lot of the other complex stuff, because it really comes down, I, I found it really, 90% of your results are going to be in your keyword selection, using the right match types, and then native keywords. 90% of your success will be directly attributed to those things. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, let me know what you thought. Do you have any questions? Is this clear? Would you like me to do a follow-up video going a little more in depth? If you got some value from this video, hit that like button. Uh, always appreciate a share and uh, subscribe to my channel because I try to release a video like this at least once a week showing you the ins and outs of paid search advertising for uh, the limo and car service industry. So guys, hope you're having a great day and have a great rest of your week.